from Galvanize, San Francisco. Extracting signal from the noise. It's the Cube. Covering the Apache Spark community event. Brought to you by IBM. Now your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to another installment of the Cube. We're live in San Francisco for a special Cube presentation for the IBM Spark community event live here in San Francisco, galvanized work, uh, workspace, startups around, and basically it's a developer environment, it's really massive. I'm John Furrier, <coughs> founder of Silicon Name, joined my co-host, George Gilbert, big data analyst at wikibon.com, James Kobielis with IBM. James is the uh, Senior Program Director of Product Marketing in the big data space we've been on theCUBE many times. Welcome guys to uh, the kickoff of this wall-to-wall -wall full day coverage of the Spark Summit and the IBM community event that's happening here tonight. Uh, in San Francisco. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, James, I gotta, I gotta say, I was tweeting last night, IBM is upping their game. And I kind of did that tongue in cheek. And it's a power move with capital P, because power is <laughs> kind of a, there's a power story in here. But this is- this We have is a product called Power Systems, but keep going. And yeah. all the analysts in, in, yeah. in the memory stuff. So really, some <laughs> major trends happening here. So IBM is ba announcing global impact news today. Huge announcement behind Spark. Yeah. Um, Big trend with obviously analytics that you guys have been executing on. What does all this mean? What does this IBM move mean here in San Francisco? Spark Summit, a growing geek community of developers in big data. <laughs> Certainly it's, it's got implications. IBM coming in with a global endorsement. What does this mean? Well, what it means, first of all, is that IBM recognizes that Spark in many ways, Apache Spark, it's an open source project, is, has achieved great traction, uh, uptake um, for some very, important and increasingly important big data analytics applications and, and use cases. Really it's all the use cases focused on in memory analytics, streaming analytics, graph analytics, uh, doing machine learning with massive parallelism inside really m a far more um, memory centric clusters of, of, of computing uh, to enable uh, fast analytics and machine learning for things like the Internet of Things and stream computing uh, applications of, of a real-time low latency nature. So IBM recognizes we've been watching the Spark community grow and grow in terms of uh, uptake, in terms of the number of committers, in terms of the number of, of applications that have been built, uh, in terms of the, the range of startups and the VC money flowing into uh, the Spark uh, industry as it's developing. It's a very immature industry, but so was Hadoop five years ago. Look where Hadoop is today. So we recognize that Spark actually addresses a lot of limitations we've all recognized with, tr I'm going to say traditional Hadoop, which sounds like a funny phrase to use for something that, that's as young as Hadoop. But Hadoop MapReduce in particular is far more geared to batch processing, batch analytics than to true real time. Spark, and Spark by the way, is a part of the Hadoop distro. That's what confuses some people. It's not like it's a, compl it's a standalone. Uh, capability. It's a sub-project that's been part of the Apache Hadoop distro for, I think it's about a year or two now, I forget exactly when it was open sourced. Um, so the Spark community has, has developed within the Hadoop community. And this week here in San Francisco, I've just come from the uh, Spark Summit down at the Hilton Union Square. In many ways, it's a coming out party for the Spark industry, which is like growing very rapidly if you look at the range of uh, of vendors, including, of course, IBM. We made a number of announcements today. I'll get to those in a moment. So in many ways, IBM is showing some, well, first of all, showing the industry the level of commitment we've already built up internally. We have a lot of developers who, in fact, we just completed a, we call HackSpark Challenge internally, where dozens upon dozens of our own data scientists and developers worked for almost a month on various projects, and uh, today we'll be announcing uh, the winners of the HackSpark Challenge. Uh, we also had a, uh, sponsored a hackathon here this past weekend at this facility, Galvanize, and that was a lot of great um, uh, 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 submissions, and they presented, and we're also going to announce the winners of that. What we're getting is that there's a lot of excitement in the developer community, the data scientist component, especially of the developer community around Spark. What we want to do is we want to show the industry that IBM understands that Spark is important to the future of, of big data development to show that we are committed to a number of things. We have open sourced System ML, our machine learning library to the Spark community under an open source license. Uh, today we've announced that. Um, we've also announced that we've established a, um, a, a development center, a center of excellence for 
Our customers and our partners in IBM are to develop Spark applications. Spark Technology Center is at the IBM office here in downtown San Francisco. That was announced today. We are also very soon going to be going into uh, launching a beta of a Spark as a service offering on Bluemix. Um, that's, that's a very important uh, uh, dis uh, uh, announcement for today. We're also announcing that we're also very much deeply uh, committed to the open source Spark community. And we have a range of partnerships that we've announced today. Databricks is one of them. In fact, Databricks is the primary mover, or at least they have the core team that developed and invented Spark and uh, are commercializing it. Um, uh, that was, uh, we, we've of course announced our, our deepening commitment to the open source process. Spark 1.4 was released this last weekend. Remember, it's open source. And it incorporates uh, a code that was uh, developed and submitted, uh, by, contributed by IBM, especially Spark R. So you can now develop Spark applications using R as well as Scala and so forth. W and also we've announced that IBM is committed to integrating Spark into the, 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 the wide range of our analytics and commerce offerings and also into Watson. We have the Watson Health Cloud, cloud with Spark inside. We've announced that as well. What I'm getting is that IBM has committed resources and de developed and De declared a roadmap for bringing Spark more completely into well, our big portfolio. Resources. It's not like it's like not not like little resources. It's a big big move, resource. Big move for IBM. Yeah, from uh, from the top <laughs> on down, from the executive level on down, it's a strong, ongoing commitment that's not brand new. We've been working on these things for a couple of years. Clearly, this is essentially the coming out to show the industry what we've been working on and how important it is to IBM. And we know to our customers going forward. This is a huge move. Um, I was tweeting again last night, this is a big, big move. It's worth unpacking, looking under the hood, behind the curtain, whatever you want to use as a metaphor. George, I want to get your opinion. You know, Spark is agile and easy to use, but it's grown over the past year in terms of commitment from developers. Um, so let's take a step back. What is Spark? I mean, Spark was born in 2009 out of UC Berkeley where, you know, the Amp Unix lab. revolution, Linux, I mean, systems, I mean, Berkeley has changed the game in many generations of tech. So again, another historic Berkeley connection, uh, UC Berkeley. Uh, and says, IBM uh, has been a partner with Amp yeah, Lab. you were the founding, one of the founding yeah. members yeah. of Amp Lab, yeah. really. So it's not like you're Johnny come lately, you guys have been there from the beginning. And the Databricks guys, by the way, came out of Amp Lab, uh, Matei Zaharia yeah. and whatnot, to found Databricks, so there's a. And one of their board members, Pete Sonsini at NEA, invested in him, he's a Berk, he's a, he's a Cal alum. So a Cal connection here comes back, reminds me of the old days of systems, and operating systems with Linux. So. George, what is Spark? I mean, this is the action. Everyone's talking about Spark. What is Spark? Why is it important? What is going on? Because Hadoop was the big thing. You know, we're in the trough of disillusionment now with, with, <laughs> with, with Hadoop, as Gardner is talking about. But now Spark is ramping up with attention. Why all the focus on Spark? Well, I want to key off something <coughs> Jim said uh, earlier, where it's not a replacement for Hadoop, but an augmentation. And you might say, um, since it does ship with uh, all the major Hadoop uh, distros, you might say it's a, a potential substitute for some components of Hadoop, just the way Hadoop has so many components itself that can be used in other cases. But it's a complement, not a substitute for Hadoop. Okay. It's a complement, yeah, I mean, the Spark yeah. runtime engines like Spark SQL or so forth are a complement to Hive or you know, on, the, on the queries, you know, data warehousing side. And they're also a complement to uh, MapReduce uh, and so forth in terms of a distributed but I, I execution to engine and, and programming framework. Yeah, so it's not an deeper. alternative, it's a complement and an augmentation. Go ahead. For, many, for many users, it'll rest on the foundation of what's come to be regarded as Hadoop 2.0, which is Yarn and HDFS. Yeah. And in that respect, um, it's certainly very much part of the Hadoop ecosystem. But uh, the one thing that I want to key off that you had said earlier, um, Spark is one unified engine that has personalities to do the old batch processing that MapReduce might have done um, and now is taken care of perhaps by other workloads. Um, it's actually several engines, not just one. But yeah, but, it, but the, the personalities then also include SQL, machine learning, uh, streaming, graph processing. But maybe you can tell us um, give us a use case where you might want to use that in an application that needs real-time intelligence, say, at the time of a customer interaction, where 
that would be a little more difficult to do with some of the Hadoop components above the level of HDFS and YARN. Yeah, let's say the Internet of Things. Let's say your, your customers are using wearables, um, and, the, and those wearables are sending uh, uh, real-time, uh, say, geo coordinates on lat long, whatever, elevation, uh, street address, whatever it might be. Um, and that's, uh, that's machine data uh, that's f flooding in in real time. It's behavioral data. That and other behavioral data that may be produced uh, and sourced from CEO's wearables that is used by you as a merchant, let's say in an in-store environment, to, to in real time to tune the experience of the customer on, say, their Apple Watch or whatever it might be to wherever the customer happens to be in the store, what aisle they're in, what they're looking at, and so forth, depending on the kinds of behavioral data sourced from that, that wearable and other uh, apps, let's say, the customer has on their, on their iPhone. And so what that involves in, in a Spark context is, A, you have uh, streaming data uh, in real time. Um, Spark streaming is for close to real time data. It's basically, it's mini batching. It's not exactly continuous streaming a la IBM InfoS for streams, but it's close. Um, but it's also behavioral data that you need to do graph analysis on to find the patterns um, relevant to, um, for example, individuals' relationship to each other in social networks like families and friends in and around the store and so forth. Um, you need to do, you meaning the merchant, need to do queries in real time using S Spark SQL to uh, be able to uh, 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 look at the data being fed in, to process it through machine learning, to query the, the patterns in terms of like, uh, you know, to do predictive analysis of what the customer might respond to in terms of real-time offers presented in the context of, let's say, some wearable application, so that you can then tune an offer in real time to where they're at now or where they, where they may be in the next uh, five minutes and so forth. What I'm getting at is that these are the kinds of applications that, for, say, e-commerce, where there's a new generation of endpoints, meaning mobile mobile endpoints, meaning wearable endpoints and so forth, that are generating all manner of machine data that you, you, you need machine learning to be able to find the patterns for. That's where the, the various capabilities of the various Spark engines uh, come into play, meaning Spark is a unified architecture then for bringing all that data in together and finding in real time, the patterns and doing predictive analysis so that you can then serve the customer better. That's, you know, the, the many ways, the, one of the uh, showcase kind of applications for Spark. Okay, so that level of integration in, in real time where each piece can call on the other piece in yeah. sort of this pipeline, this real time pipeline. Yeah. Um, how would one go about building something similar with the traditional Hadoop components? Well, you, you might use, in, instead of MapReduce in, those, in, in an alternative, you might use, say, InfoSphere Streams for the streaming component. You might use MapReduce and Hadoop for uh, processing the historical data related to customer profiling and, and so forth. Um, and then in terms of machine data, uh, you might use a machine data accelerator, such as the one we provide on our Hadoop distribu distribution uh, begin sites. There's a lot of componentry in the Hadoop ecosystem pre-Spark that one might use for that kind of application, as well as other capabilities like other streaming uh, um, environments. And it doesn't have to be an, an IBM. You can use, you know, Storm or uh, SAMHSA or some other real-time streaming uh, uh, environment to, uh, in a composable framework to do those kinds of applications. James, this brings up a point that I want to drill down with you, which is the announcement that the hard news is obviously the commitment to Spark in the industry. So it's not like an IBM land grab. You guys are coming into the community. Far from it. No, you guys are really doing a good job like you did with Linux. So I got to give you, give you props for that. But you got IBM Cloud, which is emerging. Some, some say need a lot we're more We're not work. announcing any proprietary no, closed source applications Certainly, Hey, we're open source, folks. We're committed. Go yeah, ahead, and, you know, And again, the rising tide. Spark R, you know, we're, yeah, we're behind totally that. Totally open source, yeah. but you know, it helps float up the IBM Cloud. But the other thing, that's going to help the cloud group. So you guys, uh, that's, so the cloud group gets a benefit from that with the blue mix on uh, service. But you guys are integrating this across the company. So I want you to talk yeah. about that impact because you brought up kind of, you can use any vendor. You guys are going <coughs> to support Spark, but then also bring into your applications. This kind of talks about the need in the market around apps. 
Mm -hmm. So obviously oh, yeah. this is the trend of Internet of Things, all the plumbing we talked about. But at the end of the day, developers, what yeah. does it mean for them? First of all, it means training. Uh, uh, Spark is unfamiliar to many developers, many data scientists. The majority of, say, the Hadoop community is still getting their heads wrapped yeah. around it. That's why, for example, at Hadoop Summit last week, and I was there, many of us were there, a lot of the program was about Spark. You know, it's not like it's, these are clean separations between Hadoop and Spark. Because the reason it's all that content's at Hadoop Summit is that the, the Hadoop community needs to know more because more and more Spark tools are coming into the kinds of apps that they're yeah. building. We are doing that kind of education internally and with our customers and partners going forward. Part of our announcements this, uh, today where, excuse me, where we are, uh, IBM, we are uh, investing in education and training on Spark for our worldwide ecosystem of partners, as well as our customers, as well as our own developers, to get them up to speed in all things Spark. BigDataUniversity.com um, has a really strong online MOOC for Spark that we are pointing our developers towards to get their, their head, heads up to speed on that, but also we are very much uh, 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 activating our, our network of partners like Galvanize to do the training. Um, and Gal Gal Galvanize is one of many training partners that we're bringing yeah, into this Yeah, this, this is an environment. There's a, there's a zillion places like this that are developer focused. Because that's fundamental. You got to do the training first and foremost to get the app developers to understand what it is, what they can do with it, how it relates to the Hadoop tools, MapReduce tools and so forth they've been using, how it relates to, uh, you know, our distro and Cloudera's and Map. A lot of moving parts. We all, we're all, we all have Spark, by the way, in our distros because it's part of Apache Hadoop. Yeah. And uh, you know, there were some really good announcements from some of the comp competitors I mentioned this morning at the uh, 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 Spark Summit. Because um, we're all educating our respective customers well, at the same time, and so we're all emphasizing Well, let's, let's, let's yeah. drill down on what you said yeah. earlier. The developers were salivating at Hadoop Summit over Spark. Well, those are my words. It was exciting. It was, they were all that. excited. I'm, I'm saying energized. they were salivating. Because jam -jam. why are they excited? Because, one, it's a, it's a brand new processing engine. It's like, you know, why not have a turbo engine or some sort of new innovation that's going to make life great? But, two, it's, it's teasing out really what's going on in the data science world. So yeah. machine learning, which is an underpinning of this announcement, is uh, you guys are donating a lot of that machine learning piece. So you got yes. the machine learning component, you have this new engine which developers are like, finally I need more horsepower. It's like Star Trek, Scotty give me more power in the engine room. So Spark brings that, mm -hmm. but it's still early. So is, do you agree with that statement? Would you add anything to that? Because you know, that's why the, the Hadoop guys are like, yeah, I just need to go faster. So it's not mm -hmm. so much replacing Hadoop. <laughs> Talk about the dynamic of the engine and then the impact on data science. The dynamic of the engine. Well, there's engines. Well, processing, so, yeah, engines you can spread around. Yeah. So, um, first of all, Spark is built on massively parallel, iter I mean, Spark is geared towards massively parallel iterative modeling of data uh, for real-time exploration and tuning of, of, of big data models um, for graph analytics and so forth. So what gets everybody jazzed is the fact that this is fast. By its very nature, it's, it operates in memory with Spark. You don't have to, so you don't have to write the date, the results, uh, intermediary results back to disk. It stays in memory. So, you know, it's 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 very much feeding on the growth of in-memory platforms um, like D, like Blue Acceleration and so forth. So the the excitement all about all around all in-memory platforms is very much fueling the excitement for Spark. The need for speed in all applications, real-time low latency speed, is fueling the excitement around Spark. The, 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 the excitement around machine learning, all things deep learning and so forth, um, to be able to find patterns in video streams and audio and so forth, behavioral streams in real time, is fueling the excitement around, around Spark. Are these, are, these are the new frontiers in, in data science generally. So, and this, so w we have the machine learning like library, that. it's the IP that we've built up over several years that is a key productivity accelerator for data scientists. We recognize that in order to really build the Spark market, and really we are, you know, we are building the, a market. We you're know it's a mature market. You're with, the, with yeah. the tech you're donating. 3,500 3, researchers yeah. are working on this. Yeah, you know, so in other words, we're open sourcing System ML, it's available to anybody, including our, 
our competitors, uh, customers, and partners, because we all recognize that we all need to accelerate the development of this marketplace. Towards maturity, it's not a mature market. We all recognize that a lot has to happen for Spark to become a mature uh, market on the solutions and the tools side. A lot still needs to be put together. Above and beyond what's already in Hadoop, Hadoop actually is pretty much mature now if you look at it. Spark will be, I predict, where Hadoop is now within the next two to three years because I think Spark will ramp the maturity curve faster, riding on, riding on the elephant's shoulders. You and know. you guys at the end of the day are going to educate over a million data scientists yeah. through this truly uh, partnerships with Ant right. Lab, Data Camp. You guys going to call that the million million developer <laughs> march? Or You're going to call I mean, it that. That's what we're going to call it here in theCUBE. George, big time stuff here. We're going to wrap up the segment here. Um, we're going to do a drill down. We are live in San Francisco for the community event, IBM Spark community event, Spark Insight. Live in San Francisco, the galvanized workspace where all the developers are here, startups, it's an incubator. At the Spark Summit, we'll be dissecting all the news, looking at all the angles. We're going to talk to folks from Berkeley, some experts from IBM. We're also going to get the lay of the land on what this IBM move really means. Stay tuned here at siliconangle.tv all day. We're going until nine o'clock at night. We will go, we'll do whatever it takes to get the story about what's going on with Spark and IBM's role in this and evolving and ecosystem. Let me just add, so right after I uh, leave the cube, uh, Beth Smith will be on. Beth was the uh, key, one of the keynoters this morning at, at uh, Spark Summit, so Beth can give you a, a fuller extent of IBM's commitment from the top down. We'll have Joel Horwitz, who is our, uh, our chief of uh, marketing for emerging markets, and Joel in many ways, is the prime mover behind this. And Who the was in the New York Times, Times, by the yeah. way? Did you see his photo in the New York Times? I haven't looked at it this morning. <laughs> was he the, the instigator, like the instigator? The uh, I, I say. No, I think uh, Rob and ben, Beth, right, and Bob, kind of driving this thing. Uh, yes, and Joel and his team. Uh, uh, they'll be on. Harriet Fryman will be on. Yeah. I think a lot of people are familiar with Harriet from long back. Yeah. Uh, um, we're going to have T Mike Tamir from Galvanize. Um, and then later we'll have uh, Shankar Venkataramanan. Uh, sorry, Shankar, if I'm getting your name wrong. My colleague who's real in the area of Hadoop. Uh, and Shankar can really then tie this in directly to uh, the Hadoop market and um, as well as to our Big Insights product, which by the way includes Spark support already. Um, then Amp Labs' Fernando Perez will be on later this afternoon. Robert Parkin, one of IBM's uh, crack uh, data scientists, will be on to discuss uh, what he's doing um, uh, with Spark. Then we'll have later on a, a town hall panel downstairs here at uh, Galvanize. We're going to have uh, dignitaries like Ed Dumville of uh, Silicon Valley Data Sciences will be uh, 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 chairing it. And Shankar will be on, so will Mike. And Paco Nathan of Databricks uh, will be on, as well as Fernanda Perez and uh, someone from Tachyon Nexus, uh, Hei Yuan Lee. David Townsend will be on a little bit later. He's, uh, he'll talk about the Spark Technology Center we've established downtown here. Um, uh, then we'll have um, um, Rob Thomas. Um, Rob was going to go on earlier, but Rob will be on at 6.30 now tonight. Um, and Rob will always give a, his very insightful uh, point of view on the, uh, on the guts of uh, Spark. Um, and where we're going on the uh, IBM is on the technical side in terms of building out Spark into our solution portfolio. And then uh, towards the end of the uh, evening, we'll have lightning talks from a wide range of partners and, and customers all around what they're doing with Spark. It'll be exciting. I, that's what I'm really looking forward to, to hear real tangible application discussions. And then uh, I think Paco Nathan comes on to close tonight from Databricks, and Paco is always interesting to listen to. So we've got a packed schedule of really good programming here, interviews with, uh, with the Cube, as well as the live streaming panel. I think it'll be a sensational day. And if you follow the uh, at IBM Big Data Twitter handle all day long, you'll get a straight feed of what's being discussed. Uh, and I know that um, I know uh, that we'll have a continuous feed of good stuff yep. uh, from on that handle because I'll be the guy tweeting behind the scenes. See, I'm like the Wizard of Oz. I'm just pulling the strings here. So. Yeah, it's was a great partnership in collaboration with IBM. This special Cube presentation again. Spark Summit's happening at the Hilton in San Francisco. We are here at Galvanize the Workspace. We're going to bring you all these Spark insight here on the Cube, and of course, coverage of Spark Summit. Um, and join the conversation. Go to hashtag crowdchat.net slash spark summit. Join the conversation. Use the hashtag spark insight in there. And we'll be able to answer your questions. The Cube will be back with more. Beth Smith coming up. All the top executives and experts here to unpack the big IBM news here in San Francisco. We'll be right back after this short break.